Hey everybody, this is Eric. And this week, we're going beyond SketchUp Desktop in order to take a deep dive at V-Ray's lighting options, specifically comparing the differences between when and when not to use a mesh light versus an emissive material. So, I don't know about you out there, but I'm not really great at the technical uh, specifications. I can tell you right now that there is a big under the hood difference between using mesh lights and using emissive materials. If you've ever tried it, like this neon sign here behind me, this would be like one where you could say, well, which one would I use for this? Both would technically work. So what I wanna do is actually apply both and look at the little differences, uh, not from a technical standpoint, but from a how uh, do I apply them? Meaning how easy is it? and how can I edit them? So how easy is it to change, say, the color? So let's go ahead and do that now. I don't really need this. This is actually my finished light. We're gonna do this together. I'm gonna to have to get over to SketchUp in order to do this properly. So I've got just a really simple setup here. It's just a box with the ref reflective material and I've set my, um, I just changed my shadow settings to nighttime so that it's gonna be nice and dark. So what I wanna do is first, um, look at, I guess we're going to do emissive since I set up my scene tab to do emissive first. Let's do emissive. I've got my lights toolbar set up, but I've also got my main uh, V-Ray tool palette as well. So you're going to need both of those because we're going to go back and forth between looking at lights and looking at uh, settings. So in order to do emissive materials, we need to start with a material. So paint bucket pulls up. One thing I'm going to say right now with the missing materials, it's super easy to pick the color first in this case because, um, well, actually, um, that we may change the color. Um, but what we're going to do is we need to apply a color. So emissive materials means that it's basing it off of a material. So it doesn't really matter what color we use for this. I'm going to use hot pink because that's cool. And then I'm going to pop over to my V-Ray settings and you can see that it brought in a material right here. So that's that hot pink color. What I might want to call this is, um, I'm just going to call this neon lamp. Doesn't matter really what you call it, but I want to remember if I have a lot of materials in my model, I'm get in the habit of giving it a name. So I want to edit this in V-Ray so now I can pull up all of the settings. So if it's not there by default, you can add a emissive layer essentially by clicking this little plus icon in the top right and click emissive. So what it's going to do, it's going to add sort of another set of parameters or settings here. What I have is, you can see I just applied a pink color, and then when I said emissive, it overrode that with white. And that's okay, um, we can just go ahead and if you know the values, you can type them in, or because I don't have my values memorized, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. And then from there, there's a couple other settings here. I mean, transparency, intensity, I'm gonna leave all this as default because again, I wanna assume that this is uh, for beginners and that this is, I want to kind of just get up and, and running as quick as possible. So let's close that for a second and see how that even looks, whether or not that works. I'm going to run an interactive render. In this case, I want to, I may be making some changes, so I want to see how that looks. So that's the default settings. I've got my light glowing, looks pretty good. I'm, you know, fairly happy with the result with how little um, effort I put into that. So let's pause that there and now let's compare. So let's set this aside for just a second and switch over to the same lamp that's currently blank here. It's the, yeah, this will be the one that we apply the mesh light to. So instead of applying a material first and then giving it an emissive color, we're just gonna tell this whole thing, this whole shape to become a lamp. So what I mean is, is that we're gonna actually create a light source out of it. So it's a little bit different than the way that V-Ray renders it on the back end. Again, I'm trying not to get too technical here. So if I click this bottom button on my lights palette, which is called convert to mesh light, and then what it's gonna do is you can see that it's a mesh light because it has this wrapper around it. And if it was a, you know, not so skinny, you could see the icon that is a mesh light icon. Of course, I don't wanna do that. I wanna keep it looking like a neon lamp. So now let's see by default, if I just rendered that one, it's going to glow now. You can see I've turned all my lights off, so it's pitch black. If I didn't have that light, you wouldn't see anything at all. So now I can see that I'm glowing um, white because by default, uh, what it is is that I don't have a color applied. So in this case, let's just see. I actually haven't done this before, but let's see. Does it pick up the color or not? Uh, it may not, the same way that the emissive material, 
needed you to go in and say, actually, you need to pick the color of the light source. See, same thing. See, I already knew that, but I wanted to show you anyway, just in case. It doesn't really care what the material is because the color of the light is being set in the light settings, not in the object itself. So if I come over here, open up the V-Ray settings. In this case, I don't want to be in materials because this is not an emissive material. This is an actual light source now, and it's called mesh light. And if I had multiple mesh lights, I may get into the habit of just calling this neon lamp, something like that, or hello lamp, something that will remind me. And then now I have these, these parameters that I can edit. In this case, I can change the color again. Just eyeballing it. it would be smart if I had these numbers memorized, but hey, next time. And then the second thing we can do here is we could change the intensity, which is the brightness. So by default, the intensity of the mesh light, sorry, the emissive material was one, was set to one. And by default, um, the Im intensity for the mesh light is set to 30. So it also, now that we're actual light source, we have different units that we can set. So there are some more options and we're gonna get to these in just a second. There are actually some more options that we have when we are rendering as a light source instead of an emissive material. So if I press render on this, just to see what that did. Now you can see we're pink. We've got some reflections glowing. Everything's looking pretty good so far. I want to point out while I'm in here, before I pop out of the, the settings for the mesh light, um, if, I, if you open up, I just said it a second ago, there are some options that you have that you do not have with emissive materials. One of these might be that I don't want it to ref reflect the light. For example, you can see that I'm getting some reflections on my floor. If I zoom in here a little bit, you can see it better. And for some reason, maybe it's slowing my render down, or maybe I want to see the light, but not the reflection. It's too intense. There's a mirror or something. In this case, I can turn reflections off. And you can see now that because I'm real time, I'm interactive rendering, you can see I'm no longer um, getting the light reflection. I'm getting the glow and I'm getting the source. And you have a lot more control over saying I want to affect the diffuse material. In this case, that'd be a bit silly. Maybe or I wouldn't say silly, but it doesn't maybe make as much sense because you definitely do want um, to have that glow hitting the wall, but that's the difference between the mesh and the emissives, that you have these sort of individual control of these options, which is kind of cool, whether or not it's single-sided or double-sided. So it really just um, depends whether you want the light at source to be invisible. So in this case, you wouldn't see, um, you wouldn't see like maybe if it was a light bulb and you want to see the, the, the effect, but you don't want to see where it's coming from you'd have this option. Wouldn't work for this case. So I'm going to make sure to, to I bring that back again and I'm going to stop that render. So you can see right off the bat, there are some advantages of using a mesh light for a complex shape such as this, um, in which case that I'm going to get more accurate uh, lighting coming off of it because it's an actual light source to set it as a mesh light. But I do want to show you one example where an emissive material might make sense as well. So let's pop over to my emissive one. I know they look the same, but I'm over on the left side now to my emissive um, one. And I'm going to also pop into materials because we're dealing with the material. And one thing that's cool about the material approach, and I could have said this a second ago, but I'm coming back to it to sort of bring us a uh, full circle, is that you have this ability to add these different layers or channels within the material itself. And I'll give you an example of one that might be kind of cool for this one. It's called fall off. And fall off is basically like, um, I don't know, you can think of it like a parameter for the material. But you can see what it's doing is it's saying I want to be brighter on one side and I want to be less bright on the other side, or what I want to do is I want to have two different colors. So I want this, I want to sort of have a gradation between these two. So what I want to do in this case is maybe I want to have something like a, a white in the middle, like where the neon tube is very bright, and then maybe something more about like my pink towards the ends. And we'll see what that looks like because it's a tube in this case, that might actually make sense to have that fall off material applied. So you can see the preview here. You can start to see what that's going to look like. Maybe I'll bump the intensity up just a little bit. I don't know if that'll help me. No, that might be too much. Let's leave it alone. And then let's close out of there and let's press render what might be uh, the second to last time. So you can see this is getting you more of what that neon, if I zoom in here, you can see that maybe that's giving you more of that look that you would get with a neon lamp where you've got uh, it's brighter in the middle and then it sort of changes colors as it gets toward the outer part of the tube. 
So just an option. Uh, don't, don't have to do that. I'm going to stop it there. I'm actually going to remove that because what I want to do is I want to wrap up by, I can come over here and just say clear that. So I want to take that fallout off and I want to wrap up by rendering them both at the same time. And the reason why is because I really want to see what both of them look like. So I want you to compare. So I'm going to let that go for a second. And once that's done, you can see just sort of at a distance, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. Um, I know that the shades or the tones of the color are just slightly off, but if I zoom in, you can see that because uh, they're both emitting light, they're both reflecting onto the ground here. So if I look, oh, I turned the reflections off on that one. Maybe that wasn't the best comparison. But as far as the light source, of course, if I turn that back on, you'll see those. But as far as the light source themselves, it's glowing, it's pink. I mean, if you're really in a hurry and it's a really simple object and you're not really super concerned about the quality of the light bounce and whether or not it's, it's coming from a direct source or not, you can get away with either one. So that's kind of the point of this exercise is that, is that generally they'll both work for the purposes of, uh, of what your needs are. But it's nice to know the differences because the subtleties are where one is going to work better than the other. So that's it. Um, even if you don't render with V-Ray a lot, uh, just knowing that the fact that you have uh, it, whether it's V-Ray or even Enscape, there are these different light sources and there's different ways to apply them. And of course, the effects are going to be the same and the process for applying them and editing them is going to be different. So even just being aware of different light sources, knowing how they might work for you or how they might not work for you is always helpful information as you sort of continue with your rendering journey uh, getting better and better. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to say thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new in this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe while you're here. Uh, like, give us a comment below. Do you use mesh lights uh, for a certain application in V-Ray? Do you use emissive materials only for certain things? Did I miss something in this video? Let me know. Let's keep this conversation going there. And I'll say thank you and see you next time.